What's up? What's up? What's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Prime Support. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, what's up? What's up? What's up? You know Consumer Prime Support, we review appliances. Today, we're going to focus on a Whirlpool dryer. Alright, and of course, this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the functions and the features. Man, you already know, man, from checking out all our videos, this is my favorite part of reviewing the appliance. All right, so now that you got this appliance at home, you have the matching set with the washer and the dryer, now it's time for you to use the dryer. What's some of the bells and whistles? What happens when you press this button? What can it do? All right, so that's where we're gonna dive into this portion of the video. We're gonna let it rock for a second, man, so that you can be able to see that. All right, so we're gonna let that roll. You can see the model number behind me if you wanna pause it, check it out. Of course, that's gonna be in the description box as well. So when you're looking at this, we gotta wait for it to load up for a second. This Whirlpool dryer, you can get it in multiple colors. You can get it in white. Or you can get it in a graphite steel. You can see the chrome on the door, the World Whirlpool. Really nice looking dryer. All right, so we're just gonna pause it right there for a second. Um, dive into a couple of things inside the owner's manual, man, so that you'll know exactly how to really use this appliance. All right, so before we get started, a couple things that we can do. All right, number one, clean the lint screen, right? It says clean the lint screen before each load. Also clean the exhaust vent at least every two years. We normally recommend about um, once a year, but according to the manual here, it's in about two years, every two years. So that's pretty good to get that stuff done. So if you wanna get it done, of course, you can call your local companies in your area that does any exhaust vent or vent cleaning. If you have um, central air and all that stuff inside your home, anyone that does duct work and cleaning it, you, you can actually call a company to come out and clean the dryer. All right, of course it says load dryer, press the power to turn the dryer on. One of the great things about the Whirlpool appliance, they have the what to dry and they have the how to dry. So the what to dry gives you the delicates or the colors depending on the settings. Then of course you have how to dry it if you want to time dry, wrinkle dry, you also have adjust cycle settings if desired, additional options if you like, and of course it says press and hold the start slash pause to begin the cycle. All right, so that's one of the things you're gonna have to do on this particular unit. You can't just press start, you're gonna have to hold it until it actually counts three, two, one, and then it activates. But you're gonna see that in the video as well. All right, so we can let that rock and let that roll. All right, so one of the things that we can go back to just to look at the video, you have the power button here. You also have what to dry like we just discussed. You got the regular, your whites, your delicates, colors, bulky, and towels. All right, you also see the Whirlpool symbol on to the left. Let me move out a little bit so you can actually see that. I went a little bit too far, but hey, we're going to watch it. We're going to check it out anyway. All right, so when you see that, you see the Whirlpool decal. You also see a remote enable drum light you have steam options steam refresh and you have your temperature setting and you have dryness but we're going to get into all that as well also your your uh drum light doubles as a dump damp dry signal you hold it for about three seconds and it'll let you know when the clothes are damped all right so if you don't want to get anything too dry then you can use that function use that feature that's pretty cool like that all right so we're just gonna let this rock for a little bit man um you also see um, we talked about the dryness, um, wrinkle shield. So now you're looking at how to dry. You have your normal wrinkle control, heavy duty, sanitized, time dry, quick. Um, you have more and less time if you like. You have eco boost, which also doubles as a, sing a signal, cycle signal. You hold that for three seconds. You do have more options. And of course you have your start button there. All right, so you're gonna check it out and see how we play with the unit. Press this button here and there, how easy it is for it to respond. It's not rough, it's just, you know, press the buttons and it just comes right on there as well. Either side, you can do that. And as you can see, the number setting changes as I change the different cycles. So I'm just gonna pause it right there so that we can go into the control panel, right? Dive into this unit real quick. Control panel and features. Of course, we already discussed the power. Talked about a little bit what to dry slash how to dry. It says first select a cycle from what to dry, then select the how to dry to get the best combination cycle available for the type of items 
you are going to dry all right so we're going to go into the cycle guide as well as we um continue to dive into this video you have your start slash pause button you already know you can start it you can pause it that's really good there you have modifiers it says not all cycles and options are available in all models so you want to keep that in mind you also it says note dryer rem uh, remembers the last completed cycle and cycle settings the next time you turn the dryer on it will be set to to run the last cycle all right so that's one of the things that you want to think about with these new appliances they're a lot smarter so they try to adapt to how you really like using the appliance and once it figures you out then it's a you're able to just hit start and whatever is your favorite settings that you like to use the machine sometimes automatically knows that and of course you can start your dryer whenever all right so i, I like that feature all right so making your job a lot easier all right let's talk about temp ah oh, man it says touch to modify the cycles available temperature all right it says air only all right so of course that means your dryer is circulating with no heat you have your low medium medium high and high it says follow garment label instructions for best results it says once a cycle has started the temperature can be changed within the first five to eight minutes all right so you want to be able to do that dryness it says touch to modify the cycles available dryness levels on the sensor cycles these are options that you can use and i want us to all get to get familiar with using these different options because most people buy appliances or buy something like this and they actually don't use all the functions they don't use all the features they just go with the normal setting and whatever the preset setting is they just hit start and when it doesn't work they think it's an issue with the appliance but it could just be the clothes are too wet um, it's maybe too much clothes inside the dryer they're not as loose as they need to be so it doesn't circulate properly so if you got and, and also if you mix in different fabrics that has an issue with the dryer as well that will cause it not to dry properly so you want to think about that when you're using the appliance all right um dryness level less normal and of course you have more it says dryness is for use with automatic cycles only um wrinkle shield options it says touch to turn on and off um, and on with steam all right select models it says wrinkle shield option adds up to 150 minutes of periodic tumbling and heat to reduce um wrinkling wrinkle shield option and steam will add a short steam cycle after 60 minutes to help smooth wrinkles all right so this is an added feature a lot of appliances are doing this as well this is not nothing new but again sometimes your dryer will continue to keep tumbling after the cycle that helps with that as well as you can see to prevent the wrinkle it adds a little bit of steam in there for 60 minutes to help smooth out the clothes so you don't have to deal with that so that's a really 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 good option there especially if you got um, like shirts and different pants that you put inside a dryer that you really don't want to get wrinkled because of the fabric and of course you don't want to wrinkle so you just bam, you just throw it on real quick and just get out the house all right so that's really good all right um, we have cycle options not all cycles and options are available on all models it says use to select available modifiers for your dryer remote enable it says touch each time you want to re remotely control via the whirlpool app all right, it says follow the instructions in the Get the Whirlpool app and get connected. It says um, section below offer more details. Note, once remote enable has been selected, certain interaction with the dryer will cause it to cancel remote enable. Example, opening the door. All right, so let's look at the damp dry signal. This is something that we talked about earlier that's right under the drum light. All right, so if you want to be able to see that, you can see that there. Um, and it says, touch damp dry signal or touch and hold drum light depending on the model it says for at least three seconds to turn the damp dry signal on and off you will get a sound and a display notification as items are damp you can pause and reposition for best results all right so you have that there to help you with the um the dryness or damp It'll give you a signal let you know when the clothes are damp you have the drum drum light pretty easy hit the button the light comes on or the light comes off you also have steam options it says touch to add and or reduce static to select to selected cycles steam option add steam to the end of the cycle to help smooth wrinkles so we just talked about that in the wrinkle option it says reduce static will automatically tumble pause and introduce a small amount of moisture to the load to help reduce static all right so this is pretty good all right so you can reduce static on your machine you still could use those fabric softeners because um 
not fabric softeners, those sheets, dryer sheets, it's still good to use those. I've had customers that use the dryer balls, um, so that seemed to work as well, so whichever works best for you. But as you can see, your dryer also helps you with the static, because it's nothing like taking off your clothes and you get zapped or electrocuted, it's uncomfortable. All right, so we got Steam Refresh. This is on Steam Models only. It says this cycle is best for reducing wrinkles for dry items. Cycle time will increase depending on number of items. It says this is an independent cycle um, that cannot be combined with any other cycle. All right, so that's what that is. All right, so more time, less time, um, timed dry adjust. Touch more time or less time with the time dry quick. Dry cycle to increase or decrease the length of the cycle time. EcoBoost option. It says EcoBoost option with default on only for the regular normal cycle and is only available on that cycle. This option allows you to increase your energy savings by using a slightly lower heat level. All right, so that's one of the things that you want to think about. Right? It uses a slightly lower heat level. So if you select this option with a normal size load, it's not gonna dry your clothes properly. All right, I understand you wanna save energy. The machine is efficient enough, but they're adding all these different options. So you wanna understand the option when you select it and what's supposed to happen when you do select it so you don't have to call anybody to come out and spend money unnecessarily because it was just a user error. All right, it says the EcoBoost option will increase drying times by approximately 40 minutes. Which, be, which will be reflected on the LCD display. If optimal time is desired, touch EcoBoost to turn off this option, all right? So again, if you got a normal load, I suggest just using your regular normal load without using this Eco option. Cycle signal says use this option to turn the, cycle, the, site, the signal indicating the end of a drying cycle to low, medium, high, or off. Press and hold cycle select to um, select the volume. All right, so... Um, Good amount of option there. Of course, you have more options, so we can get into a lot of this stuff here. Uh, more options, it says touch to select your favorite cycle. All right, so let me get into this a little bit. Um, from uh, Only available for models with Wi-Fi capability. And this model does have Wi-Fi. It says favorite cycle, you may create custom cycles in the app and store one um, frequently used or favorite cycle on the machine. All right, so again, this is a smart appliance. You can do so much with the app. You gotta connect it with the Wi-Fi. So of course you wanna make sure it's in a good spot for that. All right, LCD display it says when you select a cycle, its default setting will display and the estimated time remaining for automatic cycles will vary depending on what to dry and how to dry selections or actual time remaining for time dry cycles. Um, for manual cycles will be displayed. All right, um, it says um, cycle f uh, phase labels. It says sensing, it says display during sensor cycles to indicate that the moisture sensor on the dryer is operating. It will not be displayed during the time quick dry cycles or options such as a wrinkle shield option. All right, so again, this is a smart appliance that deals with sensing of the different loads. One of the great things about this appliance when, or any appliance when you're dealing with the sensors, if you set it for about 60 minutes, it's not gonna run the full 60 minutes. It's probably gonna run maybe 45 minutes. And if it's done and it senses that the clothes are dry, it shuts the dryer off instead of running for the entire 60 minutes. All right, so it's not like time dry, like back in the day, you hit the time for 60 minutes, it's gonna run for an hour. The sensing doesn't do that. So you gotta make sure that you got the proper clothing and the fabric that matches right jeans with jeans tiles with tiles nothing real heavy and all that because as it spins the dryer hits the sensor and the sensor is what dictates the moisture inside of the clothes and communicate with your control board and that's when it turns the dryer off if it feels as though um yeah there's no moisture inside the clothes or inside the dryer all right it says dryer is in the main dry phase of the automatic cycle steaming it says steam options selected and steam phase running Cool down. This is the dryer has finished drying with heat and is now tumbling the load without heat to cool it down. All right, so static reduce. This is re uh, reduce static phase um, is running. You got your end or display message will show drying is complete. All right, this is in real timeout after five minutes. They will indicate that the selected cycles has ended and load may be removed from the dryer. If wrinkle shield option has been selected, the dryer may continue to tumble the load even if end is displayed. Check vent, and this is really important. This is one of the things that we love about these new dryers that they're giving you the check vent features. All right, so check vent, uh, vent alert is a feature available for automatic cycles only. 
This alert will show the status of airflow through the dryer and the dry event system for the dryer's life. All right, during the sensing phase at the beginning of the cycle, if it detects a block vent or low pressure, it will display check vent, clean lint screen or vent for better performance. All right, so your dryer is able to sense, right, if the, if the vent is blocked or low pressure. All right, so that helps with your dryer giving you a code or giving you a message to let you know, check the vents, something could be clogged. That's where a lot of the issues stem from when you're dealing with dryers, that they overheat. Um, when they overheat, it burns up the fuses, it, uh, it blows the fuses, it burns out the heating element. So when you're looking at your dryer, it burns out components from overheating. So that's one of the main issues that you have with dryers is that the lint and the, the vent and exhaust vents are clogged up. All right, make sure you take care of that. The dryer will continue to operate even when the check vents and no notification display, but poor airflow can impact dry times and overall performance. All right, that's one of the biggest issues there takes a long time to dry, or it's not heating up fast enough, or it's not hot enough. All right, display message can be cleared by pressing any key with the exception of power, which will cancel the cycle. All right, so we get into all that as well. And of course, if you have any issues that you want to set up the app with the Wi-Fi, you can look at the screen and you know they'll be able to help you out with that as much as they can. All right, let's get back into the video, man, so we can rock with this joint, man. Get it in, like I said before, you gotta hold it. You can see inside the dryer where the drum is spinning, you gotta hold it, one, three, two, one, then it starts. All right, so we wanna let that rock for a little bit. Opening the door, as you open the door, the light comes on, so you don't have to really press the light button. You can just look at it just to see what's going on in the inside of the dryer. All right, so of course we're talking about this is a steam dryer, man. So inside the dryer, inside the dryer drum, you do have the baffles, so you wanna make sure the baffles are sturdy. That's what rotates the clothes inside the drum. Um, I didn't have a little picture on there, but the baffles are these little white things that you see there, one there, one up there, and one here. All right, that allows your dryer to spin and, circle and spin the clothes around. So you wanna make sure those are inside the dryer. That has an effect on it. All right, we always mention clean your dryer vent. Clean the lint. All right, so you want to make sure you do that as well. All right, so that's pretty good there. So we're just going to let that sit there for a second. All right, we're going to go into the dryer um, guide so we know um, how to um, use the cycle guide on the dryer as well. So we want to keep this joint going and keep it moving. All right, so it says your dryer has a unique user interface to help you select the best cycle you need for your load. The what to dry, how to dry layout guides you for the optimum cycle in two easy steps. First, determine what items are in the load that you are trying to dry. All right, use that to guide your what to dry selection. This is then determine how you want the dry to dry them by selecting the appropriate how to dry selection. Modifiers are uh, preset for the items being dried but can be changed if necessary. All right, so that's one of the things that you wanna think about. It says to get the most energy savings and enhance fabric care for your dryer, use the automatic cycles. It says these cycles measure the drying air temperature and moisture levels to turn the dryer off once the load reaches a select dryness level. Drying performance and results may vary with service voltage less than rated voltage and all that stuff, 240 for electric, gas is 120. All right, so according to this, how to dry, what to dry. For best fabric care, choose the cycle that best fits the load being dried. R stands for recommended cycles. A, alternate cycle and a blank cycles available but not optimal. All right, so when we look at it, how to dry, how do you want to dry? How to dry a cycle, you have your normal, wrinkle control, heavy duty, sanitized, time dry, and quick. All right, so it says regular. Automatic sensing cycle stops when dryness level is reached. All right, so that's one of the things we're talking about with the sensor. Dryness level shuts off instead of run, running the full cycle. All right, so that's pretty good there. All right, um, heavy duty, high heat, longer cycle. Automatic sensor, sensor cycle stops when dryness level. So that also has a sensing cycle as well. You have your sanitize, which is high, high, hot, hot, high heat, hot, high heat used to kill 99.9 percent .9 of three common bacteria time dry says set um set amount of dry time 
dryer runs for the amount of, of time selected. So that's like a manual cycle. All right, you have your quick set amount of dry time, dryer runs for the amount of time selected. Again, that's another manual cycle as well. What to dry and um, what to, what do you want to dry? <laughs> what to dry? So you have baby clothes, um, pajamas, handkerchiefs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, coats and jackets, cotton drapes, machine wash curtains, tablecloth, business casual and non iron fabrics all right so these are the things that you'll use when you're using the regular cycle and all this is going to be in the description box as well that's one of the things we love about the owner's manual all this stuff is in here and it's going to teach you how to really use it all right let's talk about uh, delicates you have bras fa uh, fabric shower curtain lingerie shears undergarments wool dress pants um and dress shirts all right that's another one there for bulky items you can use blankets all right, fabrics and rugs, you got to be careful with those, especially in the washing machine. If it shreds, that's going to have an effect on the washing machine. And it's going to cause your machine not to drain. It could damage your pump or motor. So keep that in mind. Um, heavy drapes, you got jeans and you have comforters, um, bed, um, pet bedding, um, pillows, fiber fill, sheets, sleeping bags, and stuffed animals. All right, so these are certain things that you can actually do when you're using the bulky items. Again, be careful. Um, make sure that the machine or the wash machine is spinning everything out because you don't want to put heavy comforters, um, beddings, blankets inside the dryer because that can pop the belt and cause the dryer to not function. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, the star says extended high heat drying cycle intended to help sanitize items such as sheets and towels. This cycle is not recommended for all fabrics. For best results, this cycle should be run to completion to ensure sanitation and do not interrupt cycle. All right, so that's good there. All right, so a lot of the stuff, we it says how to, how do you want to dry? We did that already as well. Let's look at some of these um, additional cycles, right? It says what to dry. You have whites, which is cotton undergarments, white napkins, athletic, that's for colors. All right, so it's only two for the whites which is co uh, cotton under undergarments and white napkins. All right, so you have colors, you have athletic wear, performance wear, colored napkins. Of course, when you're in the gym, you're working out, that's one of the things that a lot of people are doing now. So you wanna make sure you use that specific cycle for that. You have towels, you can use dishcloths, towels or non-rubber lined rugs. All right, so that is mostly it there. You do have different models. If you have a 7120 and the 8120, right? Um, you have the 5100 or the 6100. It all depends on what model that you have, but you can actually look at it there to get, give you some idea of some of the options to choose from um, as far as the cycle settings as well. All right, we can talk about a little bit of icons. All right, so depending on the icon, um, I'm gonna tell you if it's remote enabled, depending on the icon, if, it, if it's on or off, you have your steam fresh, you got your steam, you got reduced static, and you got reduced static and steam. All right, so those are some of the icons that you have to look for when you're looking at this dryer. All right, so you have your eco boost, right? So you see the little leaf there. You have your drum light, light on or light off. Got your Wi-Fi indicator if it's on or disconnected or connected or disconnected, however you want to look at it. All right, those are the different icons you can look at. Um, you also have a smart grid peak rates in effect. All right, if you have the status on or smart delay or smart pause, depending on the status that you have it in. All right, you have your favorite cycles. The hearts is always the favorites, man. So um, you can also download and go cycles as well. We talked about a little bit on some of the options that you have. You can download certain cycles depending on the model. Um, you also have your signal, um, your cycle signal, um, low, medium, high, or off. You have your damp, dry signal where you have on and off as well. Um, if you do need any additional assistance, man, we always ask you guys, check out the owner's manual. Go inside the owner's manual, the description box, we'll have that information for you. So you'll be able to contact Whirlpool and get all the information that you might need. Alright, so, man, we got a lot of stuff that we covered. So we're just going to let this continue to rock, man. As you can see, man, cleaning the filter, always make sure you clean the filter. Um, the door, again, nice size door, um, has a little lean on it. And you can tilt it about halfway. This is a 90 degree angle, how the door should look. That's one thing you can look at your door to make sure it's at a 90 degree angle. Anything less than that or more than that, you're gonna have issues with it probably closing, so you might wanna get that service. 
All right. Of course, again, I'm your boy Richie Rich, man, at Consumer Prime Support. We out of here, man. The functions and the features, you already know. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the parts. Man, how much is gonna cost you to repair this appliance if there's an issue, there's a defect in the part, there's an error code, it's not heating up, it's not spinning. So different issues that you might deal with outside of the warranty, because if you watch the warranty portion of the video, you're gonna notice there's only a one year manufacturer warranty, both parts and labor for this particular unit. So this is gonna be outside of the warranty cost. Our example we normally use for our service fee is $150 plus a slight markup of the part. All right, so this is the gas dryer Whirlpool model numbers right in the front. Common issue that normally goes bad is that the drum reels or drum rollers will either wear down, it makes a loud noise, it would cause the machine not to spin properly. Um, normally it's about, I would say on each model is either two, um, sometimes I even saw four, and there's the newer ones that might have six that's on top of there, all right? So if you happen to need this, you're looking at 28.83 per um, drum roller, um, depending on what is it that you need. Sometimes they come as an assembly with two or you have to purchase them individually. So let's say it's an individual thing, $50 for the part, labor 150, you're talking about a minimum of about 200 bucks plus, um, if you need more than one, then of course it's gonna be at least 250. So I'll say a minimum of 200, um, ranging about 200 to about 250 bucks, depending on which one you need. All right, another common issue, you have gas valve coils. So these coils is what allows the machine to allow the gas to come through the solenoid. So these energize the solenoid and allow the gas to come out so the igniter could glow. And then of course it creates the combustion, it lights, and then your clothes get heats up. Then your clothes heat up. Common issue for these, um, the dryer would initially start running fine for about 10 to 15 minutes. After that, the machine does not come back anymore, come back on anymore, the gas does not come back on and it doesn't light. Then of course the remaining cycle that you have to dry the clothes, it's not really coming on, it's not getting hot, and then of course you're gonna call for service. All right, so this, these are common issues for them to go bad. They do come in a set. So again, it's 3242 according to this site, but we're gonna say it's about 50, labor 150, you're talking about 150 bucks. All right, idler pulley, pretty common issues where the idler pulley can break, they can wear out. So this is connected to the actual dryer belt where it rotates. So if there's any issues where the idler pulley is worn out or broken or defective, then you're talking about $35.50. It is a common issue. Roughly, if we mark this up to about 50 bucks, labor 150, you're talking about $200 there as well. All right, Whirlpool lint filter. This is something that you can purchase yourself. You do not need a tech. You just need the model number to your appliance, order the part, get it shipped to your house and install it properly. Um, dryer thermostats, all right? Thermostats are common issues where they do wear out a lot. For this particular one, it's not a common issue, but it can, if you happen to need it, you're looking at $43.40. Whirlpool dryer air grill. These are plastic components, so over time they can break. It is a common issue for them to break. I know for the LG model, it breaks and when they break and your clothes are spinning on the front, it actually can start ripping up your clothes. So you wanna be careful with that. But if you happen to need it, it's $29.70. You mark it up to 50, labor 150, you're talking about 200 bucks. Uh, moisture dryer sensors. So these are the small sensor bars that's actually connected to this grill, right? That sense the, um, the moisture in your clothes when the dryer is operating, when it's spinning, when you're looking at different things, that is a part of it. Um, but if you happen to need them, 911, not a common issue. Uh, these last forever, all right? So I don't have to replace those much. Um, Whirlpool dryer igniter, all right? So igniter, common issue. Um, they did. They tend to break or wear, uh, break. They don't wear down. So either it works or it doesn't. Um, it's not. It's different from the gas ranges. Ranges wear down, but the dryers are really consistent. So if they work and they come on, they're good. I don't really have too many issues with bake igniters. Um, I said gas dryer igniters. Um, the last time I replaced a gas dryer igniter was uh, I don't know seven eight months ago. I don't really replace it much. All right, but if you happen to need it, forty-five nineteen. If we say that this part for this example is about, um, it's already fifty bucks. So if we round it up to um, fifty, we say it's a hundred. 
Labor, you're talking about uh, 150, you're talking about 250 bucks. Um, you do have conversion kits, but I would not worry about that. You would need a professional to do that. Um, so um, conversion kit to convert it from natural gas to LP gas, but you gotta know what you're doing to do that. Um, flame sensor is a common issue. This is connected directly to the burner on the side of the gas dryer. All right, exactly what it says is a flame sensor, so it detects the flame and allow the unit to cycle on and off. If that's defective, then your dryer would not ignite, the igniter would not glow, and of course you're going to deal with other issues then. You're talking about $50 for this part. If you mark it up to about $100, you're looking at $250, $100 for the part, $150 for the labor, $250. Bucks. All right, bulbs, you can buy that stuff for yourself. Dryer motor, all right, so if you look at this unit, common issue where the dryer seized up you can see the motor there it wears down they burn out creates humming sounds um you're looking at 201.59 right normally you do not replace the motor by itself all right you will have to replace the blower wheel and both of these come together all right because it's difficult to really get it off depending on how old the machine is to try to twist it in the opposite direction and unscrew it off rather than just cracking it and that's normally what we i do i normally break them just get both parts together easier break it off and put the new one on, all right so if you're looking at this unit 20159 for the motor 6701 for the blower wheel we're talking about at least 300 dollars in parts labor 150 you're talking about 450 bucks all right so um, you have dryer felt and seal that wraps around the actual drum. Over time, these, these components do wear out, all right? So it's a pretty common issue for that to happen, all right? So when you're looking at it, um, you're talking about $50.23. Labor, it's $100. Um, so we're talking about at least one seven, uh, at least $75 in part. So you're looking at $225, bucks. all right? So that's not too bad there. Um, Whirlpool dryer thermal fuses, common issue. Man, these this price is high. They're fifty five fifty three. All right, so these are common issues when your dryer overheats from you running it multiple times because your vent is clogged. Also because um, the heating element could be overheating or defective. It blows the fuse inside the dryer. So this is the fuse that typically goes bad. It blows the fuse. You're gonna need a new fuse. You're talking about fifty five. $55.53. Roughly, I'll say it's about $75 for the part. Um, plus $150, bucks. you are talking about at least $225. All right. So that's how much it would cost you to repair this um, fuse. And you want to check all the other components just to make sure, right? Everything is okay. Everything is all right. Um, because you just never know. All right. So the Whirlpool dryer drum roller axle, not a common issue. They do not wear down, but if you happen to need it, 47.73. Um, you have one that's 51.78. Um, Whirlpool dryer motor pulley that comes with the motor assembly already. But if you happen to need that part, it's 58.70. Um, another dryer thermal fuse, common issue, 51.41. 75 dollars for the part. Uh, 150 for the labor you're talking about 225 bucks pretty common issue for them to wear out um blow as far as the fuse because the dryer can overheat all right so you want to make sure you clean your vent all right so we're going to also put a video out to show you the dangers of not cleaning your dryer vent all right so that's something that we all got to look into make sure we do that periodically at least um once a year or every 18 months Whirlpool dryer high limit thermostat. Again, another thermostat, 6924. Just saved the part was 100. Labor 150. We're talking about 250 bucks. Um, dryer felt, 2560. If you happen to need that, if it wears out on a drum. Whirlpool dryer power cord, not a common issue, but it's 6777. All right. Whirlpool dryer lint filter. That's another one there. 52.48, you got screws, you got dryer seal. Um, let's see what else that typically goes bad. You got gas, dryer assembly that comes with a brand new igniter. So if you happen to need that part, it's $320.17. All right, so if you marked it up to about 400, labor 150, you're talking about 550 bucks. All right, so that comes with that. That's the gas valve assembly with the coils and an igniter, all right? So you can get the whole entire kit and you just replace everything. All right, so we talked about the gas dryer valve assembly, 
burner valve that comes with it if you want that um, whirlpool dryer belt switch most dryers have a switch that shuts off the dryer when the belt is broken or pop or disconnected um, the pulley lands on the switch and deactivates the dryer all right not a common issue but if you need one it's 20 23 28 all right you got gas valve with um, connectors we're not going to talk about that because you need a plumber to do stuff like that um vent dryer vent duct not a common issue there all right so let's see what else bracket light not familiar with that because it's not showing a, a particular picture if you need the control panel all right which is the panel that you press the buttons you're talking about 336 26 400 dollars for the part 150 for the labor 450 bucks common issue where it can break down some of the buttons don't register um it might give a, a funny error code on a display um it could be completely dead so there's certain things that you can worry about there all right uh, whirlpool dryer temperature sensor not a common issue all right so let's see what else we got when we're dissecting the um whirlpool dryer whirlpool dryer top panel so that's the top that covers you got 21818 not a common issue but it can deteriorate it can rust um depending on where it is it gets old so um if you happen to need that air ducts and wire harnesses not a common issue all right um if you want the gas valve by itself you're looking at 268.93 all right so you can get the whole entire thing with the igniter or you can just get the gas valve with it separately it's up to you all right all right let's see if we're able to find anything else any parts or components that could be defective the whirlpool dryer drum you're looking at 307.56 for the whole drum if you happen to need it it was the crack Sometimes they can crack and make a loud noise when you're spinning. You're talking about at least 350 in parts, labor 150. You're talking about at least 500 bucks there. All right, whirlpool air duct, not a common issue there. Let's see what else they might have. That's about it, man. So this actually wraps up all the videos or different parts that we might have when we're talking about the parts portion of this video man of course if you happen to need this man you can check out the parts portion so you know exactly what parts go bad of course you already know who i am man i'm your boy richie rich i'm in the lab getting it in i'm out peace all right so for this portion of the video we're going to focus on our overall review to let you know exactly how we feel about this whirlpool dryer all right, so we're gonna start off with the warranty. Warranty, 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 the manufacturer warranty. All right, so from looking at this particular unit, of course, when we're talking about the warranty on this appliance, it's a Whirlpool Major Appliance Limited Warranty. Couple things, of course, you wanna focus on. Always remember, attach your receipt, proof of purchase is required to obtain warranty service. All right, couple things that you're gonna need, name, address, and telephone number, model and serial number, a clear detailed description of the problem and proof of purchase including dealer or retailer name and address all right so you have it in multiple languages major appliance limited warranty before contacting us to arrange service some questions can be addressed without service please visit the trouble tr troubleshooting section all right so you can do that contact whirlpool go online check it out troubleshooting section to help you out because there are certain issues that you might um, can resolve over the phone. Um, also, if you want to make a claim through the warranty service, you have numbers that you can call, whether it's in the US or Canada, that's up to you. But for this particular unit, it has a one year manufacturer warranty, both parts and labor. What is covered? Your sole and exclusive remedy under the limited warranty shall be product repair as proven um, therein. This limited warranty is valid only in the United States or Canada. Canada and applies only when the major appliances used in the country in which it was purchased. We talked about it. All right, Whirlpool brand of Whirlpool Corporation, Whirlpool Canada LP will pay for factory specified replacement parts and labor to correct defects in materials or workmanship that existed with this major appliance was purchased or at its sole discretion replace the product. 
In the event of product replacement, your appliance will be warranted for remaining term of the original unit's warranty period. All right. Um, outside of that, that's all they're giving you. You're giving you a manufacturer warranty of one year, both parts and labor. That is average. So as far as the grade that we're going to give that, we're going to give it a three. Uno, dos, tres. Three. All right. That's about it. Average warranty. Get an average grade. All right. Especially the price that you're going to spend for this unit. All right. So outside of that, that's it. All right. So the next portion of the video, we're going to focus on the price. How much is going to cost you? Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. Either way, it's going to cost you. Man, when we're talking about a price for a particular appliance, let's check out these different components. We're going to dive to Home Depot. We're going to do Lowe's and Best Buy just to give you an average price for this particular appliance. Of course, what we're talking about this dryer is a 7.4 cubic feet, white gas dryer with steam and advanced moisture sensing technology. And it's Energy Star. Originally, you're talking about $13.99. Um, saving you 10%, which is 140 bucks. You can get this particular unit in white for 1259. All right, and that's the only one that they have at Home Depot. Let's go to Best Buy. All right, again, you can get this particular unit in gas um, or electric. Electric's a little bit cheaper if you look at it. Um, gas is 1259.99. Electric is 1169.99. But again, either way, you're talking about at least roughly about $12.59.99 for this particular unit, depending on what area you're in as well. That's the price that you're going to spend for this appliance. So we can look at some of these pictures and some of these images of this particular appliance as well before we move on to Lowe's. Let's talk about Lowe's. Again, you can get it in white. You can get it in graph. Uh, they call it chrome shadow. So those are the two finishes that you can get it in. But let's see where... Lowe's is really telling us this particular appliance is going to cost us. We got to add it to cart first. So let's see what happens there. Um, you're talking about $12.58 for the actual white um, gas dryer. Um, let's see what the chrome shadow, the price for that is going to be. Chrome shadow, you're looking at $13.48. Alright, so not really much as far as the discount coming from Lowe's either way. Let's check out some other appliances that's what similar in this particular area. Um, 7.4 cubic feet, whip steam. You have different appliances. One here for 944. This is 1034. Um, getting you a little bit more off of that, depending on that color, if it's white, um, if it's a gas or electric appliance. Let's see different models. Um, you also have um, you have your Maytag, that's $8.98, um, that's compatible with smart appliance that's doing the same thing. You can get it a lot cheaper if you go with the Maytag version rather than the Whirlpool version on that particular unit. You have the dryer here from LG, which is $7.48. Um, you also have a Samsung, which is $9.28, another LG, which is $8.28. So as far as the price that we'll give this particular unit as a grade, to be honest with you, man, we're going to probably give it a grade. Roughly, I would say it's about a two. I would go with a two um, because that price is extremely too high for this particular appliance on a dose. Don't want to forget that dose too because for the simple fact it's just too high. In our opinion, you can get different appliances from what you can see, what we showed you initially. There's appliances that's just as compatible to this particular unit that you can get three or four hundred dollars off depending on the model that you get and where you get it from for this particular appliance. So that's why we give it an overall grade of a two. Man, dose. All right, so for the next portion, we're going to focus on the parts. Man, cost per repair for this particular unit. When we're talking about a electric dryer, right? Um, or gas, depending on what model you get it from, right? So we're going to focus on that a little bit. Um, we're talking about an appliance. Um, certain parts that normally go bad, the average cost per repair we're talking about, that is about 300 bucks um, for this particular unit. Certain parts that normally go bad, you have your igniter, you got drum rollers, idler pulleys, belts, motors, flame sensors, control panel, control board, the drum, thermostats. If you check out the parts portion of the video, we break it down to give you an estimate of how much each individual, each individual part that commonly goes bad, the price for that so that you can see it. Um, that's why we got the average cost at 300 bucks. 
And if we're looking at it just from an overall perspective and what we think of this appliance from working on this particular appliance, we really like the appliance. Average price of 300 is pretty good. So that's why we're gonna give the parts grade and overall grade of a four. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four. All right, so the next thing we wanna focus on, man, it is the functions and the features you already know man this is the favorite part of my other video that we love to do here when we're talking about this appliance man check out the functions and features we break this thing down like none other so that you'll be able to know exactly what are some of the things that this appliance can do what some of the bells and whistles some of the things that i can mention we talked about the 7.4 cubic feet this unit is has moisture sensing where you have sensing options that you can choose as well it's a smart appliance where you can communicate it and connect to your Wi-Fi it also has voice control where you can communicate with the dryer that is awesome there when we are talking about the modern technology that's implemented in a lot of these appliances so that's what makes them a smart appliance because they can communicate through an app to give you notifications about the appliance as well some of them are smart enough to even connect with the dryer if you get this uh, the wash machine if you get the set so that you can communicate with both of them and they'll be able to work off of each other to know what cycle is best to operate the appliance depending on if you use if you use the washer and then the dryer would adapt to that so you want to think about that as well it also has a steam setting with wrinkle shield plus we dive into that in the function portion of the video as well when we're talking about steam plus man steaming in an appliance helps with the wrinkle shield less wrinkles inside your appliance as well it has a static reduce option where you reduce static on the appliance where the machine continues to keep turning after a certain period of time so that the machine your clothes won't get wrinkled and have any static in it it has an eco boost option as well sanitize it has a dryer rack where you can um, dry your pillows, your sweaters, and even your shoes, your Nikes, your Jordans, whatever shoes you might you want to dry, you can do that as well. And we're talking about this unit being an Energy Star appliance. All right, so as far as our overall grade for the functions and features, you already know, man. Bam, bam. We got five, man. That five is where it's at. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Cinco. All right, so let's go over this overall grade. Man, warranty, we got a three. Price, we got a two parts we got four function features we got a five um overall grade we added up man you're talking about a 14 divided by four you got a 3.5 as the overall grade for this appliance all right so from looking at this appliance you already know man we cannot recommend this appliance with a grade of a 3.5 it does have some good qualities about it that we really like we love the function and features we like the price of the parts and average cost per repair and it's a really durable appliance as well the warranty uh it's okay the biggest issue is that the price man you're talking about 1200 1300 1400 dollars for this particular appliance for a gas or an electric dryer we just don't think that's the right price for that we think that is extremely too high and that's why we gave it the grade that we gave it but you already know who i am man i'm your boy richie rich at consumer price support you help me i help you we both help each other so next time i'm out of here don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'm out peace